My favorite way to explore a city is to ride its transit system. Over the years, I've checked out many different systems around the world, but there are always more to ride. In this video, join me as I try out a transit network that's new to me. This is our first time riding Link Light Rail in Seattle, Washington. We've arrived in Seattle on Amtrak. Nearby Amtrak's King Street Station is the International District Chinatown Station serving the light rail. The walk is not far, but unfortunately there is no in-station transfer. The first thing we did was buy an Orca card, a reloadable transit card that can be used on all public transit here. Before we get on a train, let's talk about what LINK actually is. LINK is the light rail system in Seattle and the surrounding communities. Specifically, we're looking at the LINK 1 line today. The 1 line is a 25 mile or 40 kilometer long line linking Northgate with Angle Lake through downtown Seattle and SeaTac Airport. The original segment opened in 2009 with the current line having completely opened in 2021. Later this year, an extension to Linwood is scheduled to open, as well as the first segment of the two-line. By next year, the full two-line will be open. Later extensions will see the network going all the way to Tacoma and Everett. But we're talking about the 2040s before all those new lines are built. So I'm at International District Chinatown Station right now, which is actually the closest stop to the Amtrak station. And it's in a tunnel, so it's great separated from the rest of traffic. But you'll notice that the tracks behind me are still laid within a paved surface. Now that's because this tunnel used to be shared with light rail vehicles and buses. Link Light Rail is operated by Sound Transit. Sound Transit is a transit agency that oversees certain transit operations across Pierce, King, and Snohomish counties. Sound Transit has contracted King County Metro, the operator of Seattle's bus system, to handle operations and maintenance on the link. Here at Westlake, the original northern terminus of the One Line, you can get a good look at the former bus infrastructure. This tunnel opened in 1990 as a tunnel exclusively for buses. It was closed in 2005 for renovations and reopened in 2009 as a combined bus and light rail tunnel. For a while, it was one of only two shared bus light rail tunnels in the US and the only one to actually feature stations. But in 2019, Seattle stopped running buses through the tunnel. Now it's only used by light rail, meaning that Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania has the only remaining shared tunnel in the country. Nevertheless, the four stations from International District to Westlake all still have pavement, a last remnant of the mixed operation of years past. At Westlake, transfer is available to the streetcar and the monorail. Videos of both systems will be coming next week. The train arriving over there is a Kinky Shariol LRV. Kinki Shario is a Japanese company, and these LRVs are the older trains that run on the system, having been introduced when the line first opened in 2009. The newer model is the Siemens S700. Having entered service only in 2021, this is the train that we're riding on now. You can ride Siemens light rail vehicles almost anywhere in the United States, and they can make the national transit landscape somewhat monotonous. But the ones on Link have several design elements that set them above the rest. They have a stylish new headlight design on the outside, and on the inside they incorporate several modern features as well. These include large LCD screens that show the route, as well as these door lighting panels that change color when the doors open or close. Those who know me know I'm kind of a sucker for these.
While the stations downtown are located very close to each other, that drastically changes once we leave the city center. The one line is characterized by the long stretches in between stations. The next stop is Capitol Hill, where our hostel just so happened to be. Capitol Hill Station, named after the neighborhood it serves, and although it is still an underground station, a very deep underground station in fact, it is not a part of the downtown transit tunnel anymore, and you'll notice that the tracks don't have pavement for buses in it. The platforms at Capitol Hill are buried 65 feet or 20 meters below the surface, but the neighborhood upstairs, with the many parks, delicious restaurants, and beautiful views made it more than worth the hike. Let's head a little further north. As you may notice, every station we've seen so far has been underground. In fact, if we pull up this map, you'll see that the vast majority of the one line is either underground or on elevated tracks. Only a small section through the neighborhoods of Soto and Rainier Valley are at grade, in street medians. But even here, the light rail gets signal priority. In my opinion, this is one of the greatest strengths of Link Light Rail. The great separation is not only safer, but it also allows for much faster speeds, making the light rail a viable alternative to driving. Because with how much of this line is underground, it really makes you wonder why they decided to go with light rail vehicles, and if that has something to do with sharing the transit tunnel with buses back in the day. Let's hop on the light rail and travel back south now. You may have been surprised to hear that the first section opened in 2009. That's very recent, even for an American transit system. It's not that Seattle didn't try. Like most American cities, Seattle had an extensive streetcar network, which was unfortunately all ripped out by the 1940s. This is the 112 Angle Lake. In 1911, and then again in the 1920s, and again in the 1950s, the city proposed building a subway, but each time the plans were rejected by voters. In the 60s and 70s, the federal government even reserved a large chunk of money to build a subway in Seattle, enough to cover two-thirds of the cost, but once again, with not enough public support. The federal money was then given to Atlanta to build MARTA instead. Finally, in the 1980s, the plans for the current system were finalized and successfully passed. The bus tunnel downtown was constructed with the plan to convert it to light rail in the future. It took much too long, but Seattle finally now has the beginnings of a strong rail transit network. We have time for one more story. As mentioned before, we are riding the One Line, but that wasn't always what this line was called. For the first decade of operation, the line was known as the Central Link. Then in 2019 came a big rename. From then on, it was to be called the Red Line. That lasted all of two years. Since the line runs through neighborhoods that had historically been redlined, many people complained that naming the line the Red Line was insensitive. In 2021, the current One Line name was introduced to replace the Red Line. However, on some trains, you can still see the original red maps hanging above the doors. That was our first time riding Link Light Rail. The modern trains and stations really impressed us. 
The only thing I would say is that some of the speeds downtown are very slow and could be improved. But I am excited to come back to Seattle when the extensions and the new lines open and to just explore more of the system. Thanks for watching today. If you want to see more content from Seattle and all over the world, please subscribe to Trains Are Awesome. We'll see you next time.